Welcome back, everybody, to the continuation of our recap of Pyanodons on Twitch. So, last time around, we finished up doing the Pi Science Pack 1 over here. This machine over here has been working quite a while, all the way up to the point that we can now actually make geothermal power plants. And we did so. Not only did we do geothermal power plants, we also did a whole bunch of other stuff. But let me just walk you through the things that we did. Maybe let's start off with the geothermal power. Now, I could drive over there but driving over there probably takes about two or three minutes well we will see we will see uh let's maybe drive over there it's it's probably a fun drive either way we have enabled geo from a power and i can already show you the power grid over here the power grid over here uh we are now very good for power we can now use all of that power and we shall need all of that power because one of the main users of power in the future is going to be uh what's it called again electrolyzers uh we kind of noticed during the stream that electrolyzers use up to 10 megawatts of power which is well a lot is it 10 megawatts let's have a look at it again they are over here yeah every electrolyzer <laughs> a little bit more than 10 <laughs> 10.333 megawatts yeah and we are going to need the electrolyzers to make oxygen as oxygen is a very important uh, resource in all of the future smelting. Good. Um, by the way, this is also where the titanium mine is. We're going to drive past the titanium mine. And we're going to drive all the way over to where our geothermal power plant is. There we go. And that is down here. Actually, it's, it's not too far away. The, the, we got two of them. The other one is a little bit further away. Let's say it like that. A little bit further. There we go. There we go. And here is our geo from our power plant. There we go. At least we have lamps over here, so it's not too dark. It's still kind of dark, which is kind of annoying. But this is our geothermal. Now, these are built on the geothermal wells, I think they're called. What were they called again? Um, pressurized water. What do we put you on again? We can maybe check it like this. Mm. And then geothermal. And then if we take a look at the entity. Geothermal fissure. There we go. That's what we build them upon. And what these things do is we push down pressurized water and we get out geothermal water. The geothermal water then goes into these regenerative heat exchangers, where we then turn the geothermal water straight up into steam. For every 600 geothermal water, we get 300 steam. At the beginning, this recipe is not the best. We do get better recipes for geothermal water later on. Uh, for example, we do get... This is the next one where we turn 600 geothermal water into 300 pressurized steam at a higher temperature. And then later on, it gets better and better. And then it gets worse. <laughs> then it gets worse. No, and better and better. So the initial power plant we have over here, this is just like what the first power plant setup that you need to do to make this thing roll. And you might notice something around this one. Uh, we kind of put some tree farms around it. And there's a specific reason for this. The, these regenerative heat exchanges over here all of them produce 50 pollution per minute. So this whole block of here, of six of them, produces 300 pollution per minute. Now, we are kind of on the outposts over here, and there are biters around. It's not a lot of them, but they do exist, and we don't want to aggravate them. So we put down the tree farm around our geothermal power plant over here just to consume the pollution, because every tree farm over here consumes 910 pollution per minute. Whereas these over here, the total of this one over here produces, um, what is it, 300 pollution per minute. So we sink quite a lot of pollution over here. And you notice that if you take a look on the map, you will notice that there's almost no pollution over here going around. Um, the same is true for some other places. We used to have quite a bit of pollution over here over the desert. And I've placed down two of these same exact tree farms over here um with these two mines so that we can reduce the pollution coming from over here and it is very effective it is extremely effective um i will probably be placing more of these tree farms around everywhere now there was a bit of a debate about what which recipe we should use over here obviously you want to use the least productive recipe so that this machine over here can run the longest and there was a bit of a question about how we get to carbon dioxide you can see that we do need carbon dioxide because we do need to make moss and we need the moss uh, to make the tree saplings over here. And we need the tree saplings, of course, to make the trees. And there was a bit of discussion about that. We could go two ways. Either uh, bring in the carbon dioxide from external, which we ended up doing. Or, option two, start making coke on site. And then once we have coke on site, we can uh, turn that coke into carbon dioxide. Now, there is 
a better carbon dioxide recipe out there. Uh, and there is one we want to use, especially if you have uh, wood lying around. There we go, craft. And that is making it out of biomass. There we go. The biomass to carbon dioxide recipe is very, very good. However, this recipe we've not unlocked yet. We will unlock it soon-ish. <laughs> it's still kind of far down over here. Uh, but we will be able to unlock it soonish. And once we have this unlocked, then we can just sink the extra wood that we make over here into biomass. And then that we can sink into carbon dioxide, which we can then use for the moss farm over here. But for now, we just bring in carbon dioxide from external. We are actually making that stuff right over there. <laughs> Might have made it a little bit too big. The plan was to use this for multiple different carbon dioxide users, but we kind of ended up using it only over here, where we made a very long pipeline uh, all the way over here so that we can get the carbon dioxide in over here so that we can um, use it for, to make the moss. And everything else over here is self-sustainable. Uh, actually, it's a little bit more than self-sustainable. We are backing up on moss very, very, very slowly. Um, if we have a look over here, there we go, there it is. This chest over here tells the story. There is about 148 in here. And every now and then, and by every now and then, I mean probably once per week, we will have to come over here to consume this moss. Then again, it seems to be going up quite fast right now. But keep in mind, this recipe over here is also very, very, very slow. So this over here will probably be consumed again uh, by this thing over here. If not, then we'll just think of something. Maybe we'll just export it back to the main base. We will see. Good. Of course, we made a second one of these. This over here was our first uh, Geo from a power plant where we just tested out how the mechanics work and how we can set it up. The amount of geothermal plants to regenerate heat exchanges over here is incorrect. I kind of made it a little bit, well, not a little bit, a lot less than it is required to. For every one of these geo from a power plants, you can run four of these. Uh, we've got three of them, so we could run up to 12 over here. We only run six. And my reasoning for this is I just want these fishes over here to last a little bit longer. Um, they will run out at some point in time. Um, there is a limited amount of resources in there. It is 182 million over there and 214 million over there. But I'm not quite sure how to yeah, how to value this value. It could mean that this over here will be running out in like a couple of days. It could be a couple of weeks. It will probably be a couple of weeks, but still, it's it's kind of hard to to co correctly to put it into, into into relation to stuff like that. So I just made it a little bit smaller, and if we need more power, then we make more power. But for now, we're pretty, pretty good on power. Then, of course, we have the second one over here. The second <laughs> geo from a power plant is all the way over here. I had to make a power line from all the way over here to all the way over here, over there, and over here. And not only that, there is also um, a carbon dioxide line in there, which goes all the way over here. And you can already see over here, this is the Mark II. We've already kind of cleaned this up a little bit more. Things are more structured, which I kind of like. And things are also very good over here because as we can see over here, pollution over here is not really that much of an issue. The pollution over here gets sucked up entirely. But of course, this one is also a little bit smaller than what we have over here. We've got four um, geothermal plants over here. That mean, means we can run up to 16 of these uh, regenerative heat exchanges. I went with 12 just to have a little bit less, just to keep it rolling for a little bit more. And these over here are also sitting on loads and loads and loads of geothermal water. This one over here has 1.2 giga, uh, giga units uh, of fuel in them. So we will have to see how long this over here takes. Nevertheless, it's running like a charm and I'm very happy with geothermal power. Um, the old power plant, this one over here also still exists. And this one over here has a bit of a change to it. It used to run on raw coal and raw coal alone. Uh, but we went down the path of the first level of coal processing, and which now means that we now use way less raw coal, and we use way more of actual coal, coal briquettes, not coal briquettes, what's it called? Crushed coal? What is it called? It is called crushed coal and coal dust. And with this, this power plant over here runs perfectly fine. There's also some wood in there, as you can see. The reason why there's wood in there is because we got yet another set of fast wood forestries over here to consume the pollution that this place makes over here. And this place over here now definitely makes less pollution, which is bloody amazing. Um, and all the extra wood that we make, well, we just 
put it in here and we just start to burn it off over here which is perfectly fine which is perfectly perfectly fine so we got a whole bunch uh of new power over here and of course the coal processing it's pretty straightforward we plan to consume a full yellow belt of raw coal uh at the moment we use less because we don't use all the coal we are actually backed up on coal over here um the byproduct at the moment all of it later on you can process the byproduct further i mean if we take a look at the coal processing line uh, it is of course over here craft mm, where is it where is it where is it there we go so we take the raw coal in three pieces we turn it into one crushed coal two coal and a bit of coal dust the crushed coal later on we can crush further into coarse coal more coal and coal dust the coarse coal over here we can turn that either into coal finds pulp where we can refine it further or we can crush it down into coal um i'm not quite sure if this over here is a good choice to do actually because this over here is 30 megajoules of energy and you turn that over here into 16. i would rather maybe just burn it off directly um but yes there, there is of course a whole resource optimization line in here which you have to keep, keep into account but this over here is working like a charm and i'm very happy with it the same is true for our iron ore uh you might see that the iron ore or the iron plate belt over here is completely packed up and the reason for that is we have also made an iron plate processing unit over here and this is the first stage of iron ore processing this over here is already a very good upgrade for your iron plate ba basically just crushing up the iron ore getting the stone out and turning it into processed iron over here we can then smelt the processed iron over here straight away currently everything is backed up over here because of stone so we do need to make some kind of big stone consumer and there is a couple of things you can do with stone um we can use it for ammo well we don't really want to do that we don't really want to use it for landfill landfill is also is that the only landfill recipe landfill is fucking expensive <laughs> landfill is really really expensive um we will probably want to turn it to saline water which we then can turn into salt and other good stuff um we can also cook it into bricks whenever we want to we can turn it into the moss we can turn it into the gravel we can turn it into concrete and stuff like that there's a whole bunch of things we can do with stone i have no clue what the mova plant is but it sounds bloody amazing um of course we will probably be turning it into a lot of train track good 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 but yeah um the processing over here is straightforward the plan for the iron ore over here however is to go and that's already what we're preparing over here is to go into iron processing stage two or well stage one in this case where we turn the processed iron ore over here with some borax and some oxygen into molten iron ore and then the molten iron ore over here we can turn into iron plates now if you compare these recipes all together uh, let's maybe start off with the basic one usage um you can smelt eight iron ore into one plate so that's the baseline we can also turn five iron ore into three processed iron ore and then three processed iron ore into one plate so that is already a significant reduction from eight to five we could however also turn our processed iron ore over here into molten iron ore and then the molten iron ore into iron plates now every 10 molten iron ore is well if you if we don't use hot air every 10 molten iron ore or molten iron is six plates yep uh or with hot air every 10 is 7.5 plates that is almost a one-to-one -one. so if we go back to this one over here five processed iron turns into 10 so five over here turn into 7.5 plates that means every processed iron ore over there is 1.5 plates which is a significant upgrade um this also over here means that and that's a five to three so that is 0 0.6 yeah that is about a one-to-one -one, a very very crude calculation of a one-to-one -one for every piece of ore into one piece of plate which is a significant upgrade from eight pieces of ore per plate and the processing chain for iron ore over here oops uh, usage it'll only get better the further along we go i mean we've already seen the other recipe over here um for the stage two processing where we then get uh different grades of iron and i think we have to turn it all into grade one which we can then turn into dust and then the dust over here we can turn into 
uh, the pulp and the slime. And then the pulp and the slime, we can turn into unslimed iron. And the unslimed iron over here, we can turn into even more molten iron. Or later on, we turn it into more iron pulp stage too. But that is far, far, far beyond us. Good, 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 good. So, what's the plan for the next stream? Well, definitely take care of this pollution over here. Um, probably go down more of the refined ores. We have done a lot of processing researches for a lot of the ores. Yeah, tin processing we now have, we have titanium processing, we have copper processing, we have lead processing. So we can go down over there. Wait, this is not copper, this is antimony. Antimony is definitely a thing we need to do because we do need intermetallics. And after we have the intermetallics, I think it will be all going down the poop route where we're gonna need to make some poop to make some melamine so that we can make the more advanced machines. But for now, the next stream will probably be all about ore processing. Good. So we'll be streaming Pioneer Dance twice a week from now on. Um, I do kind of want to maybe get in more streams. Um, the Christmas break will probably contain a couple more, or maybe not, maybe not a couple more, but definitely longer streams. So that will be coming up soon. But yeah. So if you do like what you see, please do leave a like, a follow, a comment, a subscription. Every one of those actions does help me out, even though... No, this is not the secondary channel. This is the primary channel. <laughs> and without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening. And until next time, see you around!